All right. Well, um, I'm Stephen J. Cannell, and obviously I started my, my career as a writer in television, or maybe I shouldn't say obviously, but I did. Uh, back in the early 70s, I was creating and producing shows like The Rockford Files and Beretta and Baba Ba Black Sheep, among others. That's when I was under contract to Universal. Then I moved on and formed my own television production studio in 1980 and went on to create and produce uh, 38 or 40 more shows through my own studio. Uh, it became the third largest studio in television uh, for uh, TV pro programming. I uh, had 2,100 employees. It was a, a completely freestanding studio. I had no partners. Uh, but in, 90, in 1995, I sold it because the FCC changed the financial interest syndication rules, which were the rules that said that networks couldn't own and distribute their own product. And what those rules were doing was protecting me from my buyer. So when that happened, I was in the unfortunate position of having 2,100 employees, uh, 30 million a year in overhead, and I would go to a to a network and pitch them an idea, and they wouldn't buy it unless they could produce it through their own studio. So it was a recipe to go broke. So I, I sold the Cannell Studios in in 1995, and I decided at that point in my life that I would become a novelist. I'd always wanted to write novels. Throughout my writing career in television, I was always reading novels. I used novels to sort of influence me, other novelists to influence me and, and, and um, to sort of um, make me want to be better. Uh, John D. MacDonald was one of my early heroes, the Travis McGee books. I was always reading those when I was writing Rockford. Rock, Rockford was sort of my version of Travis McGee. You know, but I went on to be a big Joe Wambaugh fan and a big fan of, of uh, you know, a lot of contemporary novelists later in, on Michael Connelly and Jeff Parker and, and uh, Janet Ivanovich and Lisa Scodellini and all these authors that I would read and kind of say, you know, God, I wish I could do this. And, and so I decided when I sold that studio during that year that I was marketing the studio, I wrote my first book, which was called The Plan. It was a national bestseller. I, I managed to sell. I actually wrote the whole book on spec and then I sold it. And, uh, and it was sort of the litmus test that told me that I should go on and, and uh, and be a, a full-time author as my major writing gig. So that's what I've been doing ever since. I've written 14 or 15 novels subsequently. Um, I'm also producing some TV movies, some from my, uh, I mean, excuse me, not, not TV movies, motion picture pictures, from my TV shows, like the, like the A-Team is being made as a big feature film out at uh, 20th Century Fox. Um, you know, Greatest American Hero I'm making, uh, 21 Jump Street we're making at Sony. And a couple of my novels are set up uh, as movies as well. So I'm doing that. I'm doing some acting. Uh, my life is perfect now. I write. I, I produce uh, some movies. I act when I, when I get the opportunity. And um, I'm having a really great time. Um, I spend um, five hours every day pretty much writing. I, I start off very early in the morning and write. Okay, well, I do spend a lot of time at events like Literary Orange because I believe that it's great for authors to get a chance to listen to other authors, especially authors who are just beginning. And I think the message that frequently gets sent to young writers or to, to aspiring writers is that they can't make it, that there's no, ch there's no shot for them. Uh, you know, I don't know why this message gets sent, but it gets sent a lot. And so I'm, I come around to basically talk about the fact that I have severe learning dif differences. I, I flunked three grades before I got out of high school. I was the least likely to ever succeed as a, as a writer or anything else in my life. And here I am, the, the, the creator of over 40 TV, network TV shows and, and the author of 15 novels. And if, if I can do it, you can do it. And that's sort of my message, you know. And then don't give up and don't let the naysayers tell you that you can't get where you want to go or that your career is a waste of time and that you should go back to doing something that's more practical. Uh, I just believe that, I mean, I remember when I was starting, that was all I ever heard. And, and then when I started to succeed, those very people uh, couldn't believe it. And I thought, well, you know what? It's a matter of effort. It's a matter of how hard you want to try. And one of the great things about being a writer is that you have it in your control to basically devote a, a great deal of time to your career. And I would spend, when I was working on another job, uh, 40 hours a week to support my family. I was still spending five hours every day as a writer. I would do it when I got home from work. 
And it was that immense effort that I did for six years that eventually produced the career that I'm talking about. So I had it in my control to manufacture a career for myself because I put in so much effort. And, and I think that's a great message because that's something that anybody else can do as well.